Okay, now this is the first in a series of presentations which will introduce you to a part of math which we call set theory. Now, again, I keep saying this through all of these presentations. You're going to have to forgive my writing because it's really, really bad. I'm trying to make this as neat as possible. But that says, it looks like say theory, doesn't it? But it says set theory. And that's what we're going to uh, we're going to discuss. Now, set theory is probably something that you haven't come across in school, where you've been focused in math classes on arithmetic, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction of natural numbers, and then moving on to fractions and maybe use some, some, some of what we call trigonometry and geometry, angles, and so on and so forth. But now we're going to uh, discuss set theory. Now, as I say, you probably don't do this in school, but it's really, really, really useful in getting you used to the methods of mathematical reasoning, thinking about maths. Because doing maths is not simply a matter of mechanically performing computations in arithmetic. When you get on to do maths later in school and at college and so on, you will have to, you'll be given problems which require you to think about how to prove things and so on and so forth. And the techniques of set theory are a Good, really, really good introduction. Now let's um, consider, let's, let's get some things out of the way. What do we mean by a set? A set is simply a collection of things. They could be any things at all. They could be physical things like chairs. You could have a set of chairs, a set of trees, a set of cities even. You, they may be non-physical things. They may be things like uh, numbers. You can have the set of natural numbers. Remember what the natural numbers were? The counting numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth, without end. You might have a set, uh, a set of different things. A set comprising Fred Smith, the city of New York, and an apple, for example. Now, we give sets names, and just like your class at school is a set of children in it and a teacher in it, and you give the class a name. In my daughter's school, for example, her classes are named after trees. There's elm class, and there's oak class, and there's willow class, and so on and so forth. But when we come to set theory, giving sets names like willow, or, or Fred, or or Annabelle or Susan, that would all be a bit boring. So what we tend to do is we tend to give sets names A, B, C, D, and so on. Capital letters. Now, we might have a set comprising with the only things in it, only three things in it, which is Fred Smith, New York City, and the number three, for example. So let's write that out. Let's call that set set, um, what should we call it? Let's call it set D. So if set D is the set of things, we put the things in it in curly brackets here. New York, the city of New York. My writing is really bad. And uh, what else did I say? It's got Fred Smith in it. New York, Fred Smith, if you can read that. And and the number three, and then we close the curly brackets, and that's what it is. The things in the curly brackets that just means they're in the set. So D is the set of New York, Fred Smith, and the number three. Now we might have uh, sets which comprise a whole lot of things, where to write them out like this would be really, really boring. Suppose we have the set of all natural numbers, the counting numbers. Now, let's call that set n. And we'll say that n is the set, as I say, of all the natural numbers, that's starting with 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3. And remember, we can go on adding 1, without limit. There are an infinite number of things in this set of natural numbers. So how do we signify that? Well, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. You get the idea of how this set is made up just by adding 
1 to the previous um, number in the set, you get the next one, and so on and so forth. So we can signify it like that. But there's another way of defining this set. We know that anything in this set n everything in the set n is a natural number and anything which is a natural number is in this set n so what we can say here is n is the set of all things x such that and we put a little colon in here x is a natural natural number. So that means that n is, which is what the equal sign stands for, the set of all things x such that x is a natural number. If x is a natural number, then it is in the set n. Now we might have the set um, e, which is Elm class, at my daughter's school, for example. And that's the set of all things x, such as um, x is a child, because they are children in Elm class, in Elm class. So, if there is any child who's in Elm class, any child X who's in Elm class, then that child is a member of the set E. Now let's suppose that Grace, um, what shall we call it, Grace Brown, is a member of Elm class. Then because every child who's in Elm class is a member of the set E, Grace Brown, because she is a child in Elm class, is a member of the set E. Now we have a symbol, a sign, to stand for is a member of, and that sign is this. It's a kind of curved E, and that means is a member of. So Grace Brown is a member of, or is in, E. Now let's suppose that Susan Smith Susan Smith is not in Elm class. She's in Wellow class, but she's not in Elm class. And only things in Elm class, only children in Elm class, are in the set E. So we have a sign that means is not a member of. Susan Smith is not a member of the set E, so we have the membership sign there, but we put a line through it, and that means is not a member. So Grace Brown, because she's in Elm class, is a member of E. But Susan Smith, because she's not in Elm class, is not a member of E, and that's the way we write is not a member of. Okay, now, before we finish this first short video on set theory, let me just make one point about sets, and that is that a set is simply defined by its members, the things that are in it. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? I mean that if we have two sets, and they have the same members then they are the same set. Now, let's take an, an example. Let's suppose here that we have set A. And again, my handwriting is appalling. And let's suppose that the set A is the set of all things X, such that X is an odd number. And I'll just write X is odd. That doesn't mean strange, it means that x is an odd number. And, I'll just underline that to emphasize it, x is greater than 0. And what this sign means here is that x is greater than, you see that that is bigger than the point here? It's greater than 0, but it is less than, let's suppose, 8 and 8 is greater than x. So x is less than 8 and it's greater than 0. What does that mean? Well, it means A is the set of all odd numbers which are between 0 and 8. Greater than 0 and less than 8.
Now let's suppose that we have another set B and let's suppose that B is the set with just these numbers in it 1, 3, 5 and 7. Okay, B is the set which has as its members just these four, 1, 3, 5 and 7. Well now you'll notice that 1, 3, 5 and 7 are the only odd numbers and all of the odd numbers that lie between 0 and 8, the odd natural numbers. So <clears throat> A has, as a matter of fact, 1, 3, 5, and 7 in it, and that is the same, those are the same members as B, and if that's the case, then A is equal to 